The military alliance of the Philippines and the United States is over 70 years old. But there is a new vigor to the relationship unseen since, well, the Vietnam War. What explains this new dynamism? What can we expect from the reinvigorated relationship? And is all this really in the country's best interests? Good evening. I'm John Neri, and you are in the public square. Four new EDCA sites agreed upon, the first so-called 2 plus 2 meeting in seven years, the largest Balikatan military exercise ever currently ongoing. The state of the military alliance of the Philippines and the United States is remarkably healthy and remarkable for several reasons, including one, under President Duterte, the Philippines pivoted away from the United States and toward China. And two, as a candidate, President Marcos Jr. ran with a pro-China reputation. The mutual embrace of the second Marcos and the first Biden administration is noteworthy not only for its scale, but also for its speed. What is happening? We are joined tonight by Rear Admiral Romel Ong, retired. Admiral Ong was commander of Naval Forces West in 2017 and served as vice commander of the Philippine Navy from 2018 to 2019. Since his retirement, he has gone on to many related pursuits, including serving as a professor of practice at the Ateneo School of Government. Good evening, Admiral Ong, and thank you for joining us in the public square. Uh, good evening, John. Admiral, uh, so it's in the news, uh, all these signs of a uh, reinvig reinvigorated relationship uh, between the Philippines and the United States. Um, for you, what will be the other highlights uh, of this uh, uh, renewed dynamism? Well, I think uh, first and foremost, John, it would be oh, uh, beyond yung balikatan sa kayong edka. Okay. It's the two plus two meeting that was held in the United States uh, mm -hmm. uh, recently. Mm -hmm. Kasi it's a very comprehensive uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. It covers not only the alliance itself, but mm -hmm. also on the economic front. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think uh, we need to reframe the way we look at our relationship with the United States. Uh, uh, hindi, lang, uh, hindi lang siya doon sa alliance per se. Okay. Okay. And I think that that's a recognition of the United States government mm -hmm. that uh, they need to engage the Philippines, the country, uh, not only in the traditional uh, uh, Discourse, but also to move to a, at, a, at a much uh, greater or much uh, uh, wider type of engagement. Mm -hmm. And dun yung sa economic and social fields. So, uh, just to be clear, the 2 plus 2 refers to the Defense Secretary and the Foreign Secretary meeting their counterpart. Yes. Right? So, this is the first time that's happened in, in seven years. It's a, it's a very important meeting. Uh, and as you said, it uh, helps frame the relationship uh, in, in a larger context, yes. right? Uh, foreign policy, uh, economic affairs, and, and so on. Um, but in terms of the defense cooperation, uh, if I'm not mistaken, very recently you uh, gave a talk where you uh, said that uh, in terms of defense cooperation, the relationship is going back to the right, or, or on the right track. Yes. Can you explain that? Well, uh, hindi naman... Uh Ano, lingit sa ating kalaban, uh, when uh, President Duterte came in in 2016 up to the end of his term in, uh, last year, uh, the alliance was in hiatus. Okay? Uh, uh, the only thing that uh, sustained the alliance actually was the existing military-to-military -military relationship mm -hmm. between the armed forces and saka yung Indo-Pacific Indo Command. Mm -hmm. So it, it was... Uh, Sustained at the lower level, at the tactical level, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, between uh, our military leadership and their military leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I said, uh, for this to work, dapat all in. Eh. That means not only the defense and military leadership, mm -hmm. but more important, yung political leadership are may buy-in dun sa, sa engagement or sa alliance. Ito yung, ito yung nakita kong ano, uh, when you say restore back, mm -hmm. it's in reference to the previous administration, of course. Mm -hmm. So going back on the right track, because now uh, 
it's gone uh, higher than just tactical uh, mm -hmm. level, uh, but also it's going beyond just military. Yeah. That's, that's what you're saying. Yes. Um, you mentioned that, uh, in, especially in the first years of the Duterte presidency, there was a, the, the AFP was playing a cat and mouse game with the Duterte administration. Mm. Uh, can you explain that? Cat and mouse game, uh, in a way, because the instructions from, of course, from the political leadership is, mm -hmm. okay, we're, we're veering away from the alliance. Mm -hmm. okay. But the ethical dilemma of the armed forces, particularly the Navy, where I come from, mm -hmm. is uh, I have a mandate, a, a mandate to protect my country. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's part of our constitution. I mean, mm -hmm. constitutional mandate mm -hmm. to defend our country. Mm -hmm. And if you're receiving instructions that says otherwise, then uh, you have to find ways and means to navigate that political context that you're operating in, mm -hmm. but still be true to your mandate. Okay? So it's a cat in mouse game in a sense that when uh, the cat tells you, go left, mm -hmm. but the mouse thinks that the right is the right way, mm -hmm. then you go right. But how do you now uh, work within the, that parameters? Uh, yun yung cut mouse game dun eh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's siguro uh, the diplomatic way of saying it is ano eh, constructive, uh, uh, constructive uh, disobedience <laughs> <laughs> would be the more diplomatic term for that. Um, I can understand uh, why the military establishment, the defense establishment uh, did this. But I want to ask uh, first uh, a preliminary question, Admiral. Um, isn't, it the, isn't it that the president of the Philippines, whoever is or she is, sets the foreign policy, the national security policy, and so on? So this constructive disobedience, um, isn't there a danger that uh, it's not the way the military is supposed to function? Well, we go by institutions. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, we go by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the armed forces as an institution is supposed to be apolitical. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter who sits as the commander-in-chief mm -hmm. or the president. Uh, whoever sits on that uh, uh, seat of power uh, has the authority. Mm -hmm. okay. But beyond him, there are fundamental truths that mm -hmm. are beyond politics mm -hmm. okay. and, and, uh, and beyond uh, what we would call personal whims mm -hmm. of leaders. And, and one of those fundamental truths, I think, would be uh, that the Philippine military needs the alliance with the U.S. military. Is, is that what we're saying? In order to protect the country from the perceived uh, sources of threats. No, 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 that's not a fundamental truth. The fundamental truth is one, you need to defend the country. Mm -hmm. Second is you need, to, you need to protect our people. Okay. Uh, when you say protect our people, not only their lives, including your way of life nila and their property. Okay. So those are fundamental truths. Mm -hmm. Now when you, in, give, when you receive uh, directives or instructions that co are contrary to those fundamental truths, mm -hmm. mag ka. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, maybe I jumped uh, a step, no? But what I wanted to uh, really ask was, uh, do you need the military alliance with the U.S. in it, order to protect the people? Yes, of course. Kung baga dito, ano eh, uh, when, when you play poker, mm -hmm. okay, you, you're, you, you work with the cards you're dealt with. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you have no choice. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, circumstances natin are not favorable. In an ideal world, or on the other setting, uh, we the Philippines are can capably defend ourselves mm -hmm. uh, uh, locally, in, uh, for, in, uh, in uh, foreign ano, uh, venues. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not how that's not card. That those are not the cards that we're dealt with. So we work with what we have, and the gaps that we have, in, or the the things what we cannot do because uh, we're, our hands are tied, or either, or uh, our economy cannot support a more robust defense posture, mm -hmm. then of course the alliance is an important feature. Kasi it's ano eh, I call it a gap filler. Okay. 
uh, it provides you capabilities that uh, otherwise uh, you, that you do need, but your uh, your resources are limited. Um, how about the your uh, reading today of the security threats that the Philippines is facing? Um, does uh, in your reading does uh, the need for the military alliance uh, become even uh, greater? Uh, has it remained the same or what? Under, uh, given yung secure, regional security situations, ngayon, mm -hmm. yung trajectory of uh, China's maritime ambition, I think mm -hmm. is the most serious concern that we face. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Philippines as alone does not have the gravitas to deal with that kind of situation. So we need to work with uh, other allies and partners. So well, I'm talking here of not only the United States, no? Mm -hmm. As an ally, we need to work, work with other countries, other middle powers in the region, and maybe even outside the region. Because mm -hmm. uh, the problem operates at different levels. Eh. What we're seeing now, or what is obvious, would be what's happening in the West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. But there are, there are other things in play na hindi natin nakikita. And it, it operates at different levels. Uh, one of the things, one of the problems is uh, in understanding. China's ambition mm -hmm. or global ambition is. Uh, nasanay tayo, we look at it from a geopolitical perspective. Mm -hmm. But China operates also at the geoeconomic sphere. Mm -hmm. And most of its, uh, nagmamanifest most of its uh, policies or strategies sa economics eh. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, the rest of the world, including United States and Atayo, look at that economics as a, kumbaga, a level playing field. It's, it's, kumbaga, it's not an arena of conflict. Mm -hmm. okay? But we're dealing with, with a great power that looks at all aspects of statecraft, mm -hmm. yung tools of statecraft, as venues for its ambition. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe just one last uh, question uh, involving China. Uh, the earlier uh, Chinese policy of peaceful rise, I think that's that's come to an end, right? I mean, uh, that, that's there. There is no way uh, that uh, the Beijing can actually defend uh, that particular policy, you know, uh, peaceful peaceful rise. Yeah. Okay. When we talk of uh, peaceful rise, I think it's done. It's gone. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's it did not happen. Mm -hmm. That's the point. It didn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, when we talk of China, we need to deconstruct it further. Okay, when we talk of China as a nation, that's different. Mm -hmm. But when we, when we talk of the problems that we're having now, we need to narrow it down further. We're dealing not with China as a nation or as a state. We're actually dealing with the Chinese Communist Party as the the enabler of policies. Mm -hmm. Siya yung center of everything done. Eh. Mm -hmm. And when we deal with the current state of uh, yung, yung problems natin, the regional security situation per se. We need to narrow, narrow it down further to Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. Kasi if, I, if we backtrack things from a temporal perspective, mm -hmm. I would say that 2012 is the benchmark year. And that was the year na nag to power si Xi Jinping. That's right. And Scarborough incident happened in 2012. He was just coming into power that time. Mm -hmm. And what happened between 2012 and now? Uh, over that period, yung, uh, that period of time, he slowly was able to consolidate power in China or, or in, within the party. That's right. So right now, we're dealing with, ano eh, uh, since they only have a one, far, one party, the Chinese mm -hmm. Communist Party, yung check and balance nila is through the factions, eh, mm -hmm. the factions within the party. Mm -hmm. But the result of the uh, recent leadership changes sa party uh, in China, Wala nang factions eh, kasi yung seven-man standing committee are all uh, people uh, uh, affiliated with Xi Jinping. So, ang dangerous part nun is uh, wala na yung check and balance. The party, as I see it, operates well and efficiently if, uh, under a collective decision-making process. Mm -hmm. So, dito singular na lang eh. Naka-focus naka lahat kay Xi Jinping. So, kung ano yung gusto niya, yun ang mangyayari. Do you think that, so one of the surprising things, at least to me personally, is uh, President Marcos Jr.'s embrace of the uh, American alliance 
do you think that uh, he shares your analysis of what's happening in China and the threat China poses to the Philippines, uh, which led him to uh, this re accelerated uh, reinvigoration of the alliance? Well, that would be speculating on my part. No? Mm -hmm. Siguro we go by imagery or what yung body mm -hmm. signals niya. Mm -hmm. Sigo, something might have, have happened during his visit to Beijing, mm -hmm. during his conversation with Xi Jinping, that finally convinced him that we need to go all out. Maybe he realized at the time na a uh, balancing, uh, balancing act will not work. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, while we do still need to engage China because of proximity and because of uh, our engagements, different types of engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, uh, it's not going to be an, uh, an optimistic ride, kumbaga. At the same time, I think the defense establishment in the United States has come to the conclusion that uh, China is the primary uh, rival. Uh, they, they need to transform their defense posture in the Indo-Pacific. So, I mean, that's, uh, th that's from the point of view of Washington, D.C., um, I need to ask, uh, is it possible that there's another cat and mouse game here and the U.S. is playing with us? That's possible. But ang akin ganito eh, uh, when we do engage, not only with the United States but other countries, including China, mm -hmm. at the core of that engagement would be the question, what is our national interest? Mm -hmm. What is our stake? Because I think yun yung problema eh. Kaya minsan nagbabasili tayo eh. Uh, hindi tayo nag-leveling as a country or as an, among even among institutions. Hindi tayo nag-leveling kung what is our national interest eh. Kaya madali tayong mag waiver minsan. Mm -hmm. uh, in term, bumibigay tayo in areas that are, in some sectors, think should be, that those are no-go areas. Uh, tatamaan tayo dyan. So I think yun muna. Uh, we need to be... Uh, working on the same page in terms of defining what's our national interest. So a cat and mouse game, uh, two can play that cat and mouse game. Mm -hmm. my, my sense is that uh, we need to uh, envision the country also as a power in by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, masyado tayong, ano eh, I think, minsan naunahan tayo nung quote-unquote inferiority complex natin. Mm -hmm that we fail to understand yung strength natin as a nation. We tend to put ourselves down first. Tingnan natin, take a, uh, maybe we need to walk back or step back, look at ourselves, uh, and see ourselves kung ano yung strength natin and ano yung vulnerabilities natin. And we need to be confident as a, as a nation or as a state uh, when we're dealing with that. Kaya yung cat and mouse game, who can play that game? W were you surprised? Uh at how rapidly the relationship has uh, warmed. Uh, it's not even a year uh, under the Marcos Jr. presidency. Or did you s sort of expect that to happen? Well, actually, we were tracking uh, since the political campaign. Because no? mm -hmm. oh, we were concerned, oh, where are we going to once with our new leader, whoever gets elected? But we did notice that uh, sometime March of last year, nag shift na si President Marcos during campaign. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that watershed moment was during the SMNI debate. Uh, uh, nagbago na yung tenor ng ano niya. Uh, compared to yung pre before the campaign, which is, he was practically mouthing the Duterte line. Eh. Mm -hmm. So nagbago. So, ang isip namin, ah, sige, baka campaign eh. Uh, you can say anything you want. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, you can mm -hmm. nung bawiin yan eh. Mm -hmm. Sabi nga namin, baka naman jet ski moment na naman to. Mm -hmm. But hindi naman eh. He was consistent after the election. He, he was able to set up shop already in Malacanya. Then gradually, uh, makita natin, nag, nag-perform na yung basis ng kanyang uh, foreign policy posture. Uh, personally, I was pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a good way mm -hmm. na ganun yung uh, kinahinat nun yun. Um, the conventional wisdom is that uh, his cousin, who is uh, the incumbent ambassador to Washington, played a uh, 
crucial role uh, in making him understand exactly uh, what can be done with the relationship with the United States. Do you uh, share that view? Uh, if, if, that, that, if that's what happened, yeah, maganda uh, yon. But personally, I was, was, I was not privy to any mm -hmm. of yung discussions or yung, yung interactions nila. So if that's what happened, then I think maganda, that's a good development uh, as we go back to what happened. Mm -hmm. So um, if I understand it correctly, uh, President Marcos... Uh, is uh, doing what the military and defense leadership would want him to do. Uh, strengthen the military alliance, reach out to other powers like Japan, Australia, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Um, but at the same time, the president also has a rather, uh, what's the word, a tricky relationship with the military leadership. Up to now, there is still no, uh, uh, you know, regularly appointed defense secretary. Uh, there is a, um, an attempt by the finance managers to walk back the pension plan for the for the military and so on. It, it it's a it's a complicated relationship. It, mm -hmm. It's also a well, I don't know, a cat and mouse game or a, or, or a dance. How how would you read that? Indeed, man. Uh, Number one, uh, as I said earlier, whoever sits as president, uh, yung loyal, not loyalty, but the indifference of the institution mm -hmm. And they will follow yung uh, instructions no commander-in-chief. Mm -hmm. So that's a given. Ang, personally, ang, ano ko dito, ang question ko is, hindi niya nabuo yung kanyang national security team at mm -hmm. the outset. Mm -hmm. And I think, for all other for other areas, ganun din. I think agriculture, health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So health. No. So para kung basketball, ang tanong ko dun is parang wala siyang ano. Mababaw yung bench ng mga mm -hmm. ng uh, players niya. So yun yung medyo lumaro sa isip ko. Okay. And that may have been a factor in terms of uh, ang nakik ang nasasabi ko kasi is parang kumahabol yung di defense and uh, armed military sector. Mm -hmm dun sa policy initiatives ni Presidente. Mm -hmm. But since yung team niya is medyo na, nangangapapa, mm -hmm. nahihirapan sila humabol. So makita, makita mo rito yung parang yung parang yung leader mo mm -hmm. in a marathon is already on the lead. Then yung team niya, yung, yung anchor man niya na sumusunod, medyo malayo pa humahabol. Mm -hmm. Kasi nag-uusap nag pa sila kung sino yung susunod. <laughs> so parang ganun yung impression ko. Uh, I hope he is able to, at some point, sooner the, the sooner the better, actually mm -hmm. uh, develop yung ano niya, yung yung team that he needs to be able to confidently lead, yung uh, in terms of defense and security. What about the other uh, partnerships, defense cooperation agreements, uh, and so on with? Uh, Australia with Japan, how do they play in this, the whole context? My personal view is uh, we need to work with them as part of one ecosystem. Okay. Kasi yung bilateral nandun na, it's existing. Mm -hmm. We have a good bilateral relations with Japan, Australia, and other countries. I'm more particular in terms of uh, developing a more robust engagement structure between Philippines, Japan and US. Kumbaga, a, a more uh, structured trilateral relationship. And I ang point ko rito is we need balance in the relation. Right now kasi merong asymmetry in terms of power. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, ally, our alliance with US and the Philippines eventually pupunta ka sa narrative na big brother small brother relationship yun eh. mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is where some of the opposition to EDCA, the, the way the Balikatan is being carried out, mm -hmm. is, uh, doon, na, doon humuhugot ng agam-agam ano eh, uh, yung ating some, some members of our, some of our stakeholders. In a way, parang to, uh, tama rin naman yun. Sense. So one way I think of correcting that imbalance is to put another player or another... Bring another pack, uh, person and, to the table. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at Japan as something... 
that would as someone someone at the table that to provide the balance mm -hmm. number one uh, Japan is a resident middle power kumbaga parte siya ng barangay natin eh mm -hmm. so he share it he shares the same views the same uh, concerns uh, because one of proxim we have the same proximity to China uh, and uh, it addresses yung lingering fear natin nung ano fear of abandonment mm -hmm. <laughs> Kasi meron yun eh, merong hugot na gano'n. Napagka push comes to show, baka tumakbo na lang sa si US eh. Uh, and that happened before. Uh, I mean, like the Philippines, the US is under presidential cycles. Okay. Uh, the cycle of presidency under Biden might, be, might work with us, but we don't know. Uh, somewhere down the line, magbabago yung, ano, yung leadership. In the like manner, gano'n din naman sa atin na nangyari. Uh, from Duterte to President Marcos, a big 180-degree shift. So those are, those are things that uh, we cannot control. Eh. So this trilateral uh, arrangement that you envision for the U.S., Japan, and the Philippines uh, is, is not part of a strategy to contain China. This Indeed. is not a containment uh, thing. No? Number one, I think, Containing China is an impossible task. Okay, because mm -hmm. as I said earlier, uh, China both operates both at geopolitical and the geoeconomic sphere. Mm -hmm. So geoeconomic sphere, na lang, uh, you cannot contain trade. Because uh, uh, trade uh, uh, is premise on exchange of goods and exchange of interactions. Mm -hmm. So dum palang eh, containment, and you cannot just contain China from a security perspective. It has to be total containment, which as I said, as I said, impossible mangyari yun. Okay, so a trilateral relationship would be more of an internal thing between us mm -hmm. and the other partners, uh, U.S. and Japan, and how do we manage things? And uh, hindi lang naman kasi security, regional security yung issue. We have climate change. We have uh, fishery issues, economic issues. So, hindi lang naman yung alliance or hindi lang naman ang relationship would revolve around defense and security. Mm -hmm. Do you envision uh, that it would be in the national interest to have similar uh, trilateral arrangements maybe with Australia or with uh, India? India, Japan, Philippines, or you know. That... Pwede naman. Mm -hmm. Pero ito yung, ano eh, ito yung kicker dyan eh. Uh, and it boils back to what I said earlier about yung confidence natin as a mm -hmm. middle power. Eh. Mm -hmm. Kasi if we're confident as a middle power, uh, if you're familiar with yung hub and spokes mm -hmm. strategy ng US with mm -hmm. the Indo-Pacific, mm -hmm. meaning the US as the hub, mm -hmm. and series of bilateral relations provide a spoke for the security arrangement. Now, if we envision, if we are confident as a middle power, and we figure out how we, we also become a hub, on our own. Mm -hmm. And this relationship with US, Japan, Australia, India are hubs. And ang anchor ng hub natin would be what is our national interest? Okay. And the hubs become the enabler in terms of addressing or fulfilling yung interest natin. I've heard the argument made in favor of the previous President Duterte that it was his uh, hostile stance against the Americans that forced the Americans to, so to speak, come to the table again, you know, put more money on the table and, and so on. Um, and if you were to, if the Philippines were to come up with this, uh, its own version of a hub and spokes uh, strategy, uh, I can imagine Duterte supporters would say, well, you know, that happened because of Duterte. He, he, he laid the groundwork for that. How do you, how do you see that? Well, if they want to claim credit for that, there's no problem. I mean, I, I mean uh, the question there was whether, whether that's what part, that was that part of a de deliberate strategy or not. Mm -hmm. No, sabi na natin, give na natin. No, sige, <laughs> give na natin yung argument or yung narrative na yung give na natin yun. Mm -hmm. uh, if only para lang uh, mabuo natin yung bansa natin ulit. Mm -hmm. Kasi last, last year's campaign was very divisive. Mm -hmm. Pinasukan pa nung disinformation equilibrium uh, uh, sa, sa, sa natin sa discourse natin so mm -hmm. give na natin uh, uh, part of nation building nakatulong sila in terms of that uh, strategy 
Um, Admiral, but looking at uh, it uh, from a somewhat higher perspective, looking at our region from a somewhat higher perspective, uh, we can see consolidation of power by Xi Jinping gives him more leverage. Uh, he's raised the ante as far as Taiwan is concerned. So that's one part. On the other hand, the U.S. has responded, has also uh, reasserted its uh, place in the Pacific. Um, so as a, partly as a result, the Philippines were uh, expecting more aid, military aid. Uh, something like $100 million uh, have been earmarked for construction of infrastructure in the new, the four EDCA sites, or maybe all nine. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that breaks down. Um, I'm worried that uh, whether we like it or not, we are in for a period, uh, we're in for a new arms race in our part of the world. I mean, that's, that's like the reality. <laughs> Is that a fair I frame na, natin yung situation natin. And I will look at it from perspective as of a Navy person. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what we have now is a, what we call an imbalance of naval power. Mm -hmm. And because of that imbalance of naval power, uh, lumakas yung loob ng China to, to uh, undertake coercive measures or coercive mm -hmm. practices, mm -hmm. particularly in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. Kung babalikan natin yung framing niyan, babalik tayo ron sa when we kick out the US sa Subic and Clark. Mm -hmm. uh, I always, uh, there's always a saying na ano eh, power hates a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So when we created that vacuum uh, in the mid-90s when we kick out the US from uh, yung bases nila, somebody has to fill up the vacuum. And a few later, a few years later, ano nangyari? Mischief reef. Mm -hmm. We started with the fisherman shelter, then okay. later on, it's a Gargant one military base na ngayon. Mm -hmm. So there was that vacuum. Now, there was another development that is more concerning. Uh, as of 2015, several years ago, nasurpass na ng PLA Navy yung U.S. Navy mm -hmm. in, in terms, terms of, of the, quantity the, of the yung ano nila, mm -hmm. combatant vessels. Mm -hmm. And you have to factor in also that the PLA Navy or China's Navy operates regionally lang sa East Asian mm -hmm. Uh, theater of operations lang. The U.S. operates globally. So kung titingnan mo yung what we call the naval balance of power dito sa East Asia o sa region, lamang si China. Mm -hmm. Now because of that, naka-skewed yung, ano eh, naka-skewed towards China yung advantage. And that, back, that, that needs to be balanced. Okay? Because of that imbalance, kaya niyang mag on operations. Mm -hmm. So, that's why they are in Scarborough Shoal, they're, mm -hmm. they're there in Second Thomas Shoal, mm -hmm. they're there also in Pag-asa, okay? And in other areas, uh, Senkaku in Japan. So, the only way to restore that balance is uh, to find a way to match yung, ano niya, yung capacity niya. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, if you look at the United States, hindi niya kaya i-match ngayon eh. Yung industrial capacity niya, yung industrial capability niya was, is much, much different compared to, let's say, World War II mm -hmm. or post-World War II. Mm -hmm. So, siguro, after effect ng globalization niya, uh, saray yung bang shipyard nila, hindi na nila kaya match. That's why the U.S. needs to work with allies and partners also. But really, that means we can expect that uh, there, there's going to be a lot of spending on military hardware, etc. Yes. Et cetera, in uh, ganun, part of the ganun, world. Ganun, po, ganun ang pupuntahan yan kasi mm -hmm. we need to restore balance. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, ang, ang challenge dun is how do we capacitate ourselves? Mm -hmm. uh, ayaw din naman natin pumunta sa situation ng years, decades ago when we had that type of alliance with the United States. Mm -hmm. Nagaroon tayo ng mendicancy stream syndrome eh. Yung kumbaga, puro hand-me-downs. Tapos ayaw na natin mag-isip. Ayaw na natin uh, i-develop yung capabilities natin. Mm -hmm. We totally rely on the United States. We don't go want to go back to that type of environment. Okay? Uh, kailangan pa rin natin instill within yung policy makers, decision makers natin. Mm -hmm. And of course, the defense security community. That... Uh, 
At the end of the day, we should be able to put up our own defense. We should rely on ourselves. Uh, hindi sa ibang bansa. What are the problem areas or the, or the flashpoints uh, that may uh, ignite that we should be uh, on the lookout for? So you have a, a much closer, a much stronger relationship, uh, military uh, defense cooperation arrangement with the United States. But of course, it goes beyond that. Uh, but at the same time, China is very uh, um, active in the area, very assertive mm -hmm. in, in the area. And there are other players as well. Um, what, should be, what should we be on the lookout for? Ang ilulukot natin, ititimpla kasi natin yung, as I said earlier, we need to restore balance. Mm -hmm. But ititimpla natin, kailangan i-calibrate yung actions natin kasi uh, hindi natin alam yung threshold ng ano eh, confidence or insecurity ni Xi Jinping. Eh. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and he might miscalculate. Okay? Kaya we need to create we need to contextualize yung rebalancing natin mm -hmm. uh, dito sa region. What about Taiwan? Is, is there a real possibility uh, of an armed invasion from China? If I go by yung engagement ko with some of the Taiwanese academe mm -hmm. before, ang assessment nila, it will not happen. Mm -hmm. Of course, may, mayroong pyrotechnics, yung acoustics. Okay. That's happening, uh, including yung, uh, yung recent, more, the more recent one. Mm -hmm. But ang assessment nila is, it's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, my sense is ang long game ni Xi Jinping or ng, ng CCP would be still a political uh, development within Taiwan. Remember, mm -hmm. uh, meron din pro-China yes, so. uh, political party yung KMT. Mm -hmm within Taiwan. Yeah. So, and uh, the former leader was just in, in Beijing. <laughs> yeah. And the KMT won, I think, a few months ago, yung mm -hmm. sa local, local elections nila. Mm -hmm. Kaya na medyo nasa-threaten yung seating party. So, it could have been, it could have been as easy. It could be that way. Uh, it would be a it, political it, change. It could be war, but it would be political warfare. <laughs> which is only internal to Taiwan, which mm -hmm. is wala tayong pakialam doon. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Okay, wala tayong pakialam doon. But, but from his published statements, I think President Marcos uh, mentioned uh, Taiwan as uh, one uh, factor why it was important to strengthen the military alliance with the, with the United States. I think we need to credit President Marcos in terms of ge geopolitical sense. Niya. Okay. Now, on Taiwan, kasi, uh, I would like to uh, I'll use an analogy no? mm -hmm. uh, yung sa Ukraine Russian yeah. conflict. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are the Poland. Taiwan is our Ukraine. Okay. Okay. If we are Poland, then we are safe because we have a buffer state. Si Ukraine. Si Ukraine yung tatamaan eh. Mm -hmm. But if Ukraine falls, the next in line would be Poland. So what I'm saying is, uh, uh, whether we admit it or not, Ta Taiwan is our buffer state with respect to China. Okay. And if we go by history, remember, one of the axes of advance uh, towards the occupation of the Philippines in the Second World War was to Formosa or Taiwan. Okay? Kinapture nila yung mga airfields doon sa Batanes, Northern Philippines, kagayan. And once they captured those airfields, doon nila pinreposition yung aircraft that attacks Clark. Mm -hmm. Okay? Kaya, uh, ano eh, uh, even as early as when I was uh, assigned doon sa Naval Forces Northern Luzon, mm -hmm. uh, Binabantay ang minomonitor namin yung ano eh, Chinese investments in airports or seaports na papasok doon sa northern Philippines. Mm -hmm. And we, I, personally, I still do monitor. Kasi those are potential uh, ingress-egress, eh. mm -hmm. uh, seemingly benign. So, so wait, sorry, uh, monitoring uh, Chinese uh, airfields, airports in? Chinese investments in, 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 investments in, in seaports or airports. In Taiwan or in... In Northern other... Philippines. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, meron kasi, di ba, uh, meron tinatawag na opposition. Meron tayong opposition about, uh, on EDCA. Eh. Mm -hmm. yes. But ang counter ko dyan, ganito eh. Chinese has their own EDCA. Ang tawag nila ron, BRI. 
Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road Initiative, which uh, has its problems too, no? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Admiral, uh, we're running long. Maybe uh, um, one last question. Is it really binary? Uh, we, do we have no other choice but to side militarily with the U.S. and uh, allied partners like Japan and Australia uh, in order to uh, stand up to China? Is there, is there no middle option? Ang, war, ang problem kasi natin is the Chinese Communist Party has backed itself into a corner. Mm -hmm. Na it cannot, no longer has that flexibility to diplomatically, politically, or economically give way or compromise. You're talking about uh, the Southeast, uh, South China Sea disputes? Not only. Uh, marami silang, ano eh, marami mm -hmm. silang binak, out, binak into corner yung sarili nila eh. Mm -hmm. na policies. So, hindi na nila mabawi uh, mm -hmm. yung ano na yun. Uh, sometimes, you have to look at yung yung acoustics ng China or ng CCP. Mm -hmm. Minsan, nai-misinterpret natin na it's directed at us. More often than not, it's directed to the domestic the, general public. The internal audience. Uh, so, minsan, pag nag, mukhang nag-hyperventilate yung spokesman nila, he's not talking to us. He's talking to the their public. And if you go by yung ano, uh, sa IR theory kasi yan, when you have an hegemon, mm -hmm. the logical consequence of that would be the smaller states will group together eh, and try to balance the, the hegemon. Eh. And I think uh, states... Is, is it possible for those smaller states to do that without allying with the other hegemon? I mean, realistically speaking. You know, in an ideal world, pwede sana yun. Okay. And ang failure to launch moment natin yan dito sa ASEAN. Eh. Well. Uh, it, kahit hindi siya naging security engagement or uh, military alliance, mm -hmm. it have, kung medyo-medyo robust lang siya in That's terms right. of uh, engaging both hegemons. That's right. Ideally, siya yung tamang countervailing balance to the two hegemons. Eh. Mm -hmm. But as I, as I said earlier, power hits a vacuum. Eh. So ASEAN not doing its part, create a created a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kaya nung nawala yung, kumbaga parang bola yan sa gitna eh. Mm -hmm. nag, tatlong nag-uumpugang bola sana yan. Si China hegemon, tsaka US hegemon, tsaka si ASEAN mm -hmm. providing the balance. Mm -hmm. But si, si, si ASEAN basically dissipated itself in, the, uh, in terms of regional security concerns. By, by the way it's constructed or yung dynamics within among the members. Yeah, just a so, failure to have that code of conduct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, nagbubungguan ngayon yung dalawang hegemon. Mm -hmm. okay. Ano ngayon ang alternative? Kasi wala na eh. Failure to launch na si ASEAN eh. Actually, I did that study there sa, sa, sa UP on minilaterals. Kaya I'm mm -hmm. thinking of, pwede ba minilaterals na lang? Mm -hmm. If we cannot work with ASEAN as a multilateral. Let's Maybe look at minilaterals. Like Indonesia? Or... Yeah. Pwede yun sana. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, we, had, we have a trilateral with Indonesia and Malaysia and mm -hmm. the Philippines. Pwede yun. Uh, but ang key part niyan, I go by yung, my experience with yung engagement with other militaries in the region. Uh, kung may buy-in si Indonesia and Indonesia accepts the leadership role, baka pwede sana. That would have been a good alternative. Yeah. Kung baga, Southeast Asia providing the balance by themselves. No need for an, an external power. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, very complicated issue, but we live in a very complicated world. Mm -hmm. uh, Attorney Romel, Attorney, sorry, Admiral <laughs> Romel Ong, um, Thank you very much for your time uh, and your insights uh, and for your defense of the public square. Thank you. Thank you, John. That's it for us tonight. The next step for engaged citizens is always 
to take a more active part in rebuilding our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night. Thank you.